welcome to the MBS Show, episode 261. I am your host, Norman Sanso. Joining me today is Will. Hello, Norman. How are you doing today? I'm doing fine. I'm doing fine. How about you? Oh, just a、oh, freaking excellent man. I mean, ugh, it's spring here. It's finally spring. It's nice and warm. I can open a window, and I I forget what winter is like. <laughs> oh, winter will come around soon. No, no, D- dang it, no! All right, <laughs> enough winter. I want spring now. I want nice sunny days. I want beautiful smelling flowers. I want to be able to、uh, go outside and grill something. All right, then. All right, then. And before you ask for winter because it's too freaking hot. <laughs> No, 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 no. We don't get we don't get that hot of winter here in Minnesota. We just get sweltering heat and humidity. Oh God, not the humidity. Anything but the humidity. Oh, the humidity point. I think last year it got up to like 108. There's a rule when it comes to heat. When it's too hot, you can always take something off. Yeah, but the problem is if it gets too hot, I can't take off my skin. <laughs> well then, you can always. You know what? I'm not gonna go with that train of thought. No. So, anywho, hey, I like my epidermis right where it is. <laughs>、uh, so, anywho, let's start off with the first news. So, you remember last week's episode, a flurry of emotions? Ah, yes. Good old flurry heart being a baby and、yeah. somehow saying that you know bad parenting lessons. If a child misbehaves, apologize to them.、Uh, what? No, Why? They'd get a timeout. Yes, Twilight. Twilight was not completely in the wrong, but you know what? You, you you never try and use logic on a newborn because they don't do logic. They're all emotion. Hence the title. <laughs>、um, <sighs> exactly. That's the title. You got it. But if you notice,、um, Nurse Redheart there, her cutie mark changed.、Uh, but we haven't really seen her since like season two or something. Season one, to be exact, I, I think she appeared once in the twins when they were born. I think so, but、oh, you know, honestly, she hasn't been around. And someone spotted that her cutie mark changed a lot. Well, not a lot, but a whole bunch. Instead of having the red cross, it's just a cross with a heart in the middle of it. Well, now it's at least legally distinct from the red cross, which. I'm told is the main reason why they had to change it. Twilight Sparkle's name may have passed legal, but not that cutie mark. Wait, what? Twilight Sparkle? Yeah. The, when that question about her name,、uh, the creators said it passed legal. Names do not have as much power as symbols. Yeah, because names are just two things mushed together. That's why some movies can use the word Superman with no problems. It's just the spacing in them. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you're King Corporation and you want to copyright the word candy. Oh. <laughs> oh, or do you remember?、Uh, I I forgot. There's another company that did the same, but with、uh, another word. Oh man! The, the,、oh, oh, you mean the、yeah. recent one with、uh, the people who made The Witcher, which I'm sure plenty of people will tell us in the comments that we're saying this wrong.、Uh, I don't think it's them. It's another one. But, Cyberpunk.、Uh, no, no.、Um, they had to because their legal team told them that they <laughs> had to because stuff. But you know what? I I don't think they're that mean. They're cool guys. They were pirates before this. Yeah. Well, when it comes down to it, so Red Heart had to change her little cutie mark butt stamp. My question is, did she have to go to a, a tattoo artist in order to get this done? <laughs> I doubt it.、Uh, it's the power of editing. <laughs> yeah, but can you imagine? It's like, sorry, but your cutie mark is legally、uh, too close to the symbol of our corporation. We're going to need you to change it. But、this is what I was destined to do. Yeah, well, now your destiny has to change due to the law. <laughs> the law. <laughs> oh well, at least、um, Hasbro now is not in trouble anymore. I wonder if did they get a warning from the Red Cross Association? Eh, who knows? Then again, you know, it's like being threatened by the Red Cross organization is kind of like、uh, being threatened by the Girl Scouts. At first, you kind of think it's a joke, but then they come out with、uh, saying they're going to poison your cookies, and then you just kind of back away slowly. Well, at least corporate is not getting poisoned. And talking about corporate,、uh, it, it looks like Hasbro did really well in the first quarter of this year. And well, noting that most of those things are with their 
Um, not involving pony toys, surprisingly. Well, pony toys did help, but they seem to get a lot of earnings this year, or the first quarter of this year. Probably um, due to some of the up-and-coming movies. Movies, uh, tie-in toy line. <laughs> Merchandising isn't just toys, it's also, you know, everything from... Uh, Licensing... God. Heck, yeah, right there, the big thing, licensing. Just people saying, hey, we want to use this thing for, you know, our own game and whatnot. Oh, well, then give us the light. Li- we'll give you the license if you pay us a fee. <laughs> we gotta As per usual. Hey, but still, that's not bad. I mean, as, well, technically, you know. But besides, that's besides the point. I mean, with this, they can push money to other revenues, doing other stuff. Movies, more toys, more shows, whatever it is. And also aprons. <laughs> Somehow, um, them earning more money makes them have aprons. <laughs> it does relate, right? Norman, that's uh, we're gonna have to put that probably on the top twenty list of worst segues on this show. <laughs> well, it's a segue nonetheless. But still, um, it seems that you can get the apron on Entertainment Earth, and since you like to cook a lot, uh, it's easy, it perfect for you. Sorry, but a Rainbow Dash apron. That just doesn't make any sense. Listen, if I want an apron, I want it to be a Pinkie Pie. She's the baker of the group. True. Maybe they have uh, more than Rainbow Dash. Let, let me check. Maybe they have... Uh, no. Uh, it doesn't look like it. No. Nope, it only just, seems right. to, yeah. for, they for, do now, have, for now. They have a Superman apron. They have a Wonder Woman apron. But even then, all these aprons are really disturbing for me because... They're just of the torso of the character. So it's like there's no head. You're supposed to supply the head as the <laughs> person out there. But that's just is, is even more disturbing. Now I'm thinking of just all these you know, Rainbow Dash walking by. is like, hey, Rainbow Dash. Ah! And they see the head instead of Rainbow Dash. It's me. And they're just like, what's on? What happened? What sort of horrible magic did Twilight do this time? And it's like, uh... oh, it's, it's not. It's just, it's just an apron. <laughs> oh, wow. That's that's. <laughs> Holy crap. Actually, now that sounds like a really great crack fic idea on film fiction. An Anon story where he wears an apron just like this and everyone confuses him for Rainbow Dash. <laughs> oh my god. That, that, that sounds too legit. <laughs> and the worst part is, is it's like the, the, incre- the, the incredulous of the whole situation of like, it's just an apron. He's like, yeah, Rainbow Dash, you look a little bit different today. Okay, this is just a joke. It's plausible. And then when the, when he takes it off, hey, where did Rainbow Dash go? Uh, get on it, film fiction writers. <laughs> uh, okay, okay. If the apron doesn't really float your boat, there's always the movie art book. Uh, we mentioned this last week, and well, it seems that now you can pre-order it on Amazon for um thirty four dollars pre-order okay, price. And? Okay. Okay. Yep. Uh, click. Click. Sorry, Norman. I'm just I, I'm just pre-ordering right now. No, I don't want to sign up for Amazon Prime. Why does it keep asking me? Uh, so, anywho, the price right now is thirty four forty three. This is the pre-order price. The regular price for the book will be about forty dollars. So, yeah. So you're um, just saving five bucks and fifty six cents USD at least. <clears throat> mm-hmm. And I'm not sure if this includes free shipping. Does it? No. Nope, you have to select the type of shipping. Um, uh, you, however, you can get free two-day shipping with Amazon Prime. No, I don't <laughs> want Amazon Prime. But why don't you want Amazon Prime? <laughs> because I don't buy that much off Amazon. I buy probably one thing a year. I'm not going to spend nine nine dollars for just two days of shipping. <laughs> probably, but anywho, I got no idea what the inside is going to be because, well, I don't own it. But from what I can tell from the previous art book I had, it fills in with a lot of sh- um, sketches, show design, behind the scene things, a lot of uh, in-development kind of stuff for the show. And this comes out around August, I think. Yep, and, August yeah. 29th, 2017 is the day they will start shipping. Hmm. So that means if you are lucky enough to get the book early, I would recommend don't open it. <laughs> Actually, yeah, now that I think about it, the book itself is probably going to be laden with spoilers. Yep, and a lot of what you might call this, uh, in-story stuff, like 
yeah, spoiler character you know. sketches, background yeah, sketches, yeah. villain uh, arts, uh, background placements, storyboards. Um, yeah, and concept art. Yes, that's what I'm looking for, concept arts. Uh, but the cool thing about books like this, though, is you get to see a lot of the behind-the-scenes sort of stuff, and there's a lot that gets put on the cutting room floor that you'd never see. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Uh, do, do uh, when, when's the movie come out again? When's the movie October. coming out again? Okay, so basically if you get this, it's going to be September, so literally you'll have about a whole month and a half to yep. wait uh, uh, if you get this book. But still, there's something uh, for you to get excited over, because I am, and... Uh, I I wish I can watch the movie. For now, there's no um, record of my country having the movie being shown. So yeah, Dang it. maybe I'll just get a speedboat, speed on over there, pick you up, and bring you back to the state seat. Yay! That'll be fun. We just, we just got we just got to cross the entire Pacific on a speedboat. That shouldn't take too long. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! But you know what? Uh, at least I can watch the Equestria Girl special. That's going to be out soon. Uh, soon, as in trademark soon. Uh, quotes soon. Yes, trademark soon. It seems that said movie or said special will be coming out in May. It seems that it will be coming out on 21st of May. And the third one coming out on the 23rd. Sorry, 28th. I wonder what was the first one. I forgot. So that means basically um, all the Equestria Girl specials are going to be right in May, and they're going to be released side, side by side on these new episodes. That's going to be a lot of pony. Yep, yep. May is the month of pony. Uh, for the record here, this is for Poland. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, Poland. It's going to be airing in Poland on the 14th, 21st, and 28th. Oh, so Poland's going to get it first. What's so special yes. about Poland? I'm not, from what I understand, um, the Equestria Girls uh, series is very popular in Poland and South America, from what I understand. By the way, uh, the first um, Equestria Girls special is Dance Magic, the second one is Movie Magic, and the third one is Mirror Magic. Very exciting. Can't wait. A lot of magic, but unfortunately <laughs> the first one all I can make me think of is David Bowie. Dance, magic dance, 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 <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Uh, Not bad. <laughs> Anything that reminds you of Bowie is good. <laughs> oh gosh! Now, 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 now we can only just think of like who would, who would play David? Who would play Jared? Discord, Discord would play Jared. But still, um, I'm just wondering when is this going to come out in the states? Because if you did remember all of the Questra Girl special is going to be out on Netflix. So if I do understand right, Netflix likes to show everything in one lump sum. Oh yeah, yeah. But um, if these things are re- released as separate iterations of each other, then they just may have their own separate title cards. Probably. I mean, if they're if they're each considered individual short movies. Hmm, probably. But I don't know. I mean, I just can't wait for it to pop out. I, I just want to watch. I can't get enough fix of Equestria Girls. You're the only one, Norman. You're the only one. What? There is, it's a fun show. It's cute in some regards, but it's just not... No hoops, not interested. Hmm, okay. If you say so, if you say so. But anywho, um... That's the news for us this week. Nothing more to add. But you know what? We have this thing that we call what has been entertaining us this week. And Wills, what has been entertaining you this week, my friend? What has been entertaining me this week? Hmm. That is tricky. Well, actually, I have been playing uh, Dark Souls, the third DLC, which is the Ringed City, with my good friend Wazaga, also a great artist. You can check her out at Wazaga, W-A-Z-A-G-A, at dvrner.com. She does really awesome pony art, but she also does some, a lot of really cool original stuff, too. Anyway, me and her have been playing through the Ringed City because we're a bunch of Dark Souls fans, and it's it's tough. <laughs> it's cool, but it's tough. What's so tough about it? Like, what's going on? Okay, well, jeez. But that's the thing. You spoil anything about how tough it is to people who haven't played it yet. That's like ruining the Dark Souls experience. It's meant to be a surprise of kicking you in the face and kicking you off of uh, cliffs. I think by now everybody knows that Dark Souls is hard, so it's no surprise. But (laughs) what's going on? Like, what did they um, add 
I guess the first thing to start off with is that it introduces a couple of um now now keep in mind I've only played Bloodborne and Dark Souls uh three. I've not played two or one yet, so um any of the callbacks my friend is a full time Dark Souls uh fan, so she knows all the callbacks that happen and she loves them. All right, let's put it this way. Uh, not only do you have to go through a couple of segments where there's an enemy that is unkillable unless you kill whatever is currently summoning them, but okay. basically if you, try, if you tried killing these angel-like things that shoot laser beams down at you, um, you got to find the source of these angels in order to stop them. Then you got to go through a toxic, uh, no, not toxic, but a poison swamp filled with a whole bunch of enemies, but also uh, gigantic axe-wielding uh, monstrosities that their only weak point is their head, so good luck getting through those. Then, after you get to the drag heap, you actually finally do come across the proper ringed city, and by gosh, is it beautiful. But the ringed city has probably some of the most difficult enemies you'll come across, and just to throw in the uh good old-fashioned Dark Souls dickery, they decide, hey, you know what's great? Walk across this very narrow parapet of a bridge while a dragon comes down and breathes fire on you. That seems to be traditional. Oh, it's traditional, but but it's still but it's still jerky. It's like, oh, and by the way, this dragon. Yeah, the second time you tried doing it, uh, the second time you tried doing it on a higher up uh, parapet. Yeah, now he's going to come down and he's going to prevent you from moving on. But um, there's a lot of cool new weapons types in here. Um, there's actually a new weapon type you'll get near to the end it's basically your dual wielding gigantic great swords ooh yeah oh and, and the, the special attack on the thing you basically mm-hmm. become a beyblade spinning around <laughs> it's actually a it's a very um it's a very fun weapon to have in pvp because uh if you're using it it is if you're if it's against you it can be kind of cheap but when you're using it it's really cheap and it's just so fun <laughs> I have actually gotten death threats from people over the PlayStation Network for using it. Why? Because Dark Souls is full of a bunch of salty people. <laughs> <laughs> Why even P- PvP if they're not ready for it? Like, well, no, 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 no. Uh, uh, you're forgetting that a lot of the PvP is like, you know, if you're embered, you can get invaded. Yeah, I mean, like, if you're, in- like, if you're invading people, it serves you right. Oh no, no, I was invading people. Oh. <laughs> Screw you then. <laughs> and the thing is, I've already gotten all the tongues I need to, and I barely get enough souls out of actually killing somebody. I get more souls out of farming the monsters. I'm just doing it because I like killing people because I'm evil. <laughs> you jerk. No well, wonder. That's the, that's the point of Dark Souls, to spread around the jerkiness, Norman. <laughs> oh, but besides oh, yeah. that weapon, I mean, there's a lot of other cool things, um, new spells, um, and there is actually a boss fight, which is half fighting NPC bosses and half fighting people. It's what? actually a new convent you can join, and this convent works like when you're summoned to defend the church, you actually, um, you're buffed up, you got more health, you got more armor, you got more poise, but you have to then fight against the invader. And oh, if wow. you win, they lose the boss fight, but, and you get, um, a token for that, uh, for that, for that, uh, for that convent. Whereas when you're the person who has to fight the boss there, uh, you have to fight against an NPC and a human. Good luck. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Sounds like fun. Hey, um, Wills, have you heard a YouTuber by the name of Vati Vija? Nope. Ah. Uh, you should check him out because he is an expert at Dark Souls. Like, he got the Ring City DLC before it went out because he is one of those people who, well, he's good at it. He, if I remember right, he was one of the people who was responsible for making the, uh, Prima Guide. Hmm, cool. So, from, from software likes the guy. Yep. So he got a crack at it just to test out and look for things and whatnot. And you should really check him out on YouTube, Vati Vija. I definitely will. So what uh what have what have what has been entertaining you, dear Norman? 
Hmm, for me, it's been a mixed bag of, well, the per usual things I always do. Um, but I have two things that I've been entertained this week. And one is this YouTuber called The Dom. And what he does is, um, he does book and movie reviews. Or in essence, it's things that got updated, uh, books that got updated, updated, updated. <laughs> <laughs> Use your words, Norman. <laughs> Speak slowly and softly. You can do this. Uh, book that had got updated from move to movies. <clears throat> and the series he calls is Lost in Adaptation. And one of the few things I saw was First Blood. You remember First Blood, um, that Rainbow movie? Sorry, but the only First Blood that comes to mind is Rambo. Yeah, Rambo First Blood. Oh, I thought you said Rainbow. Sorry, hey, I, sorry, my, my bad. I, I, I must have said rainbow. My bad. No, 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 but now I'm just thinking of Rainbow Dash first blood. <laughs> oh. No, okay, uh, but. No, 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 better, better. Rainbow Bright first blood. <laughs> oh no. <clears throat> well, well, anywho, um, he explained, he goes into detail of, of what changed between adaptations, like, in, the movie, Rambo was a pretty cool guy, uh, really, really chill, really leave me alone kind of person. In the book, he's kind of dickish. And so on. And that was pretty cool. I watched uh, some of his things like the Harry Potter series, what changed, and he reviewed all seven? Did he did seven, I'm um, sorry, did J.K. Rowling did seven books? Yes. Sorcerer's Stone, Chamber of Secrets, Prisoner of Azkaban, Goblet of Fire, Order of the Phoenix, Half-Blood Prince, and The Deathly Hallows. Mm. So he reviewed all of them and uh, compared what changed, what they left in, what they left out, and all that stuff. And it was really entertaining to see. Yeah, like they left out Peeves the Poltergeist. Mm, Peeves the Poltergeist, uh, I forgot which one. <sighs> the guy had a whole chapter dedicated to him in the original Harry Potter. If I'm not mistaken, um, the guy, the almost hateless, hateless guy was supposed to be something more than a joke character because of what happened in the later books that involves one of the, uh, what you call this, uh, Ravenclaw house daughter or something like that. Oh, let's face it, in the movies, no one cares about Ravenclaw or Hufflepuff. They're worthless. Hey! <laughs> But anywho, uh, it was really entertaining, and this was recommended to me by uh, by a Patreon of the show, um, Master of Lag. He mentioned something about the Dom and what he was. Well, he mentioned something about the Dom. I checked it out, and I was really entertained by um, said video series. Now I'm just looking at it one by one and picking and choosing before I sub. Well, cool. I'll have to check this guy out myself. Yeah, and he also did um, Fifty Sheets of Grey. Ugh. And what changed? And boy, he has strong opinions on them. Like, really, really negatively strong opinion on them. Um, the only thing I can say, what changed? Did it make the book or movie better? No, both of them are just terrible. Forget about it. <laughs> True, but at least he explains why they're different and what, you know what, I don't want to spoil it. If you're interested in knowing what's the difference, go watch it. Yeah, the only difference you need to know is that, uh, both are equally terrible. <laughs> Oh yeah, and how much in in the book, the word "oh my" is done seventy two times. So it's terribly written. Bad smart. That too. <laughs> that too. Oh jeez. And let's not forget that Fifty Shades of Grey is <clears throat> fan fiction of fan fiction. Started off as fan fiction, but anywho, um, the other thing is uh, I've watched Guardian of the Galaxy Volume Two. Wait, that's out. Uh, for me, it is. I'm not sure about you. Why? Has it's not out yet? I I don't I don't think it's out. Um, Let me Google it because I need of the galaxy volume two. Um, me fi- Oh, I see. No wonder. Yeah, it's not out here until May fourth. Ah, uh, you okay. lucky person. No spoilers, please. Now, all I have to say is. Get the second soundtrack because it's fun. The soundtrack is good. Okay. But is the movie good? I mean, it doesn't have to be as good as the first one. It just has to be entertaining and good. Well, 
I'll say this in terms of my personal viewings and what I thought of it. Um, my point of view for the second volume of this movie is that the first one had a lot more punch to it. This one had a lot of more character development. Oh, well, that's great. I love character development. Okay, that's good because um, when I watched it, uh, the second one at least, I felt, oh, this is fun. I like this one. But something felt off here and there. Like, it didn't have that impact that the first one had. But per usual, setting up characters, motivations and whatnot, I kind of understand. But I had a lot of fun. Not going to say anything else about it because uh, beyond this point, it's all spoilers. Ah, okay. All right, then we'll save that for some other time. Oh, by the way, if you watch the Guardian of the Galaxy cartoon on Disney XD, um, there's a huge change in certain story arcs. I'm not going to say it. When, once you see it, once you watch it, you understand what I mean. Okay. And there's a cool. great cameo by uh, Stan Lee. Of course, there's always a great cameo by Stan Lee. The guy is literally nothing but cameo fodder right now. That's all he is. <laughs> Yeah, well, this is too great. This is too great. <laughs> Though I do have to say, nothing is going to stud. Nothing, nothing is ever going to top the Stanley cameo in the Deadpool two trailer. Mm, yeah, 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 yeah. The trailer. Shut up, Stanley. <laughs> <laughs> he just outright says it. Shut up, Stanley. <laughs> that, that one was good. Oh god, that one was good. <laughs> It was just like, it, that is exactly what Deadpool would do. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Ah, oh, boys. Oh, it's so much fun. So much fun. Yeah, so, Will, if you go watch it, I do hope you enjoy it, and I hope you, we can bounce ideas once you've seen it. Well, actually, I'm planning on going to see a movie today, but I'm finally going to go see Power Rangers. Um, uh, <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, okay, I need to ask, how big of, of a fan are you with Power Rangers? It's more so, it was part of my childhood, and all I want out of it is a good action movie. That's it. Okay, Um, you will get that. If you want action movie, yes, you will get that. I really don't care. I, I was I wasn't a super fan. I'm not too. Uh, all I want is um, to see what iteration here. I really all I expect is there. There should be at least be some good. There should be good fight scenes. There should be good Zord scenes, and there should be explosions. And, there are um, explosions. And, and, if they, and if they keep the characters true, like uh, Jason is a bit of a jock. Uh, Trini should be the you know, the, 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 the spirit of the team. Kimberly should be the peppy one. Billy should be the smart one. And Zach should be like, uh, yo, I'm the cool dude. That's all, that's all I expect. All righty then. So anyway, uh, I'm not going to spoil anything for you. I mean, I just want you to go in there, enjoy. And once you've seen it, uh, let's bounce ideas or let, let's just talk about it because I, I want to know what you think because, um, I've watched it. I highly enjoy it in terms of did they create a good, Adaptation or, uh, well, I would say adaptation because if they were going off the original source, it's out of the window. So this yeah, one is, I, I've, I've only thing. seen, I've only seen the trailers and this is more so like it's been in the back of my mind to go see. Oh, oh, one other thing. There better be, at least in this movie, unlike Transformers, which doesn't use the original Transformers theme anywhere, there should be at least one instance in this movie of Go Go Power Rangers. There should be you'll at be least one instance. You'll be happy to know there is one. Yes. Okay. I'm not going to say where. It's, it's already but... leaps and bounds above Transformers for me. <laughs> I'm not going to say where, but you'll be happy to know there is one. Excellent. Once you've seen it, just talk to me. I want to know. I want to know. All right. So anyway, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at the MBS show at gmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. Uh, the show's Twitter account is at the MBS show, and I am Norman Sanzo. Will, where can the good people find you? Oh, if people want to find me, you can find me at W-I-L-I-Z-I-N at DeviantArt.com for my art, or you can find me for my writings at uh, FimFiction.net slash W-I-L underscore I underscore Z-I-N for my writings. And if you want to see me uh, blab about whatever, which is never, uh, you can find me on Twitter at W-I-L-I-Z-I-N. 
Oh, if you guys at home want to talk to Wills about the Transformers movie or the Power Rangers movie that he's going to see today, which is... Oh, no. Don't um, talk to me about Transformers. Later. Don't talk to me about Transformers. Please. Yeah. <laughs> Not Transformers, but Power su- Rangers. I'm, try- I'm, try- I'm trying to suppress those memories. Which one? The All four or the upcoming one? All of them. <laughs> I've only seen uh, them with friends, basically. It's just like, hey, we're going to go see the Transformers movie. I'm like, you know I'm just going to hate it. Yeah, but we're going to pay for the ticket. All right. Fine. Yes. <laughs> Free movie, don't care. Uh, I wish I had friends like those. Oh gosh. Uh, and also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio. And also, like our Facebook page. Uh, you can also catch us on ponyvalive.com. Um, you can also support the show via Patreon. That is at www.patreon.com slash the MBS show. For a dollar, you will get a huge thank you from us, or me personally, and five dollars will get you a thank you and also a topic of discussion or something to review. For example, we recently review a comic, which is the Duck Tales Cross Darkwing Nut comic that we did. Highly new for us, enjoyable, and kind of strange and new for us, like I've never reviewed anything else than than ponies. So, yay. And, well, that's what you get. So I do hope that you consider supporting us on the Patreon. And talking about thank yous, uh, I would like to thank Slurker Cat, Twilight Genesis, Nemdra Cotorius, Starstream, and Master of Lag. Thank you guys for all the support. And also... The new project that we do, the MBS Show Review and Discussion Podcast, available on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. So what we do here is, like I mentioned, we do reviews of the Pony episodes, comics, movies, anything that's related to the Patreon thing, and also other movies or comics or things in general. So if you want to hear that derp, it's over there. Go listen to it. Go subscribe. It's all fun. It's all fun. Maybe Will will come and talk about the season one opener, which is, I already forgot, uh, Celestial Advice. Who knows? What do you think about that one, Wills? I finally got my wish of Celestia having characterization for Celestia, something I've wanted for a while. Yay! I'm sure it's some. I kind of would like a whole episode dedicated to her and Luna, but, you know, that's just me. True. But still, it's... It's our initial thoughts. We're not going to give everything away, if are I we? Had, if I had to say one comparison, though, um, pretty much uh, there was one joke uh, uh, a, a little more. Uh, the uh, the Josh Scorcher, uh, his uh, face, as a lot of people have said, whenever he saw the Celestia scenes. Yeah, that was my face, too. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, unmitigated joy. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Anywho, save that for when we do that review, my friend. Uh, anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I have been Will as in. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the BS show. And who knows, maybe we'll get Will's insight on the Power Rangers movie. Oh, oh yes, we will. <laughs> go, go, Power Rangers. <laughs> See ya.